Can I take my shoes off? Yeah. I should, shouldn't I? I just beat that stuff. No, they don't. Otherwise, leave them on for God's sake. But should we start off? Are we starting? We've started. We've started. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, it's not often you wake up with a lovely young man next to you, uh, especially in Edinburgh. Well, you know it's what? It's a bit of a shag-free zone, I have to say, Edinburgh. I've noticed. I, I to it's... be honest, I thought I would be getting maybe a little bit more. Like, just... I'm not getting any. I know, darling. I've had. 15 uh, festivals, and I reckon I've probably had about three shags in 15 festivals. Is that it? It's, it, it's, you, you just, in the end, you just give up. You just, you just let that part of yourself go. Well, I think... And Edinburgh, I don't know, it's not what you'd call a sexy town. It's a beautiful town, I'm not getting, you know, don't get me wrong, but it's not what you'd call a sexy town, even though the Scottish lads are so fucking handsome. Oh, I know. Um, God, they're so good looking. Because this is the first time I've been to the festival, and so what I thought was... Aren't you loving the weather? Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. For ducks. <laughs> so the show's going well. The show's going like a dream. We say, uh, it, that's the reason why I'll, I'll always try and do Edinburgh if I can, because any comic will tell you that to have to work every night for a month is the best comedy exercise you could possibly have. But what you do on stage, are you are you not exhausted by the end of oh, the show? Because you do a knackered. lot of running around, oh, sort of like scaling the room. Honestly, and like, what did I do to myself creating a character like Bob Down? What what did I create for myself? Wait, can you, is this in frame? Can I you don't think it is. This is a first British Airways first class blanket. It's not mine, it's Jimmy and Elwin, so they, they obviously stole it they, as they got off the plane. They pilfered. The BA. Yeah. It's nice, blanket. isn't it? It is nice. Mm, it's lovely. This is very nice. It is nice here. I'm staying with my friends Jimmy and Elwin, and, and um, it's this. It's not really what you call a flat, is it? It's no, it's absolutely palatial. It's the most incredible, sort of high ceiling, oh. gorgeous. I, I can't even. It's not. It would be. And this is what they call it. It would be derogatory to call it a flat. No, it's it's an apartment. It's an apartment. And it's uh, this is what they call the green room. This is the primo guest room. It's all mine. And as you can see, I've spread myself around. You spread and yourself. Please don't pan around the room because it's a complete oh, and utter pig stuff. We can't. Let's, we, let's not pretend there's a cameraman. Right. No. Let's not right. pretend that we're glamouring. Let's not pretend yeah. that we're surrounded by a crew. Yeah. That that, that doesn't happen. You are your own crew. I'm, but that's what I like about modern media. Me too. The idea it's that you can just very democratic. The idea that you can just create something, create the content. And just get it up. That's what I do with my YouTube channel. And Bob YouTube. Down for for I've got to do it backwards for real. Bob Down for real. At and YouTube. there's about ninety something. I think it's like, yeah. I put up. I put up. Yeah, there's about so ninety five clips. Yeah, there's so much material. And I've got I've got so much more really? to convert from VHS because I'm from the VHS era. I'm from last century. Did you see Apple are now the biggest company in the world? They've now they're now richer than Exxon which was formerly the largest company in the world. And I think Ikea might be number three. And I do agree with that. I think Ikea... I don't mind Apple and Ikea being the two of the biggest companies in the world. I do like Ikea. I like... <coughs> do you ever go around and just like pretend you live in the little rooms? Because I absolutely love doing that. Have you ever tried to double back? Have you ever tried to get back I don't know halfway what that through? That sounds rude. Well, you know, they've got you... You know, they've got you on that maze. Oh, yeah. It's like Hampton Court. Yeah. Yes. They got the idea from Hampton Court. I've not tried to, have you tried to go back? There's, there's little pass doors. If you watch the staff, you can cut through. I know. So, could you... You heard it here first. <laughs> I was wondering if you could talk about the creation of Bob Down and how Bob Down came to be. Uh, Bob Down, Bob is, uh, I've been doing that character. It's a song and dance man. And he's really based, I've been doing him since I was a little child. Mm. He's quite a small child. I gave him a name 27 years ago. And I went solo 24 years ago, with him, beginning of 1987. But really, I've been doing it as a child. And what he is, is a response to... When, when, when television started in Australia, I, I, it's different here because England, Britain is um, geographically small with millions and millions of people. So television and radio have been pretty well, apart from the earliest days, in the 30s and 40s, television's been pretty well national since day one. Uh, in Australia, because of the giant, like America, the huge geography with population really spread out, television uh, until the mid-70s, late 70s, 
was local. It was all local. Mm. And so um, all the variety programs and all the magazine shows and all the talk shows, they were all local TV. And so when I was a child in Melbourne, um, it was the sort of golden years of Australian television because Aussie TV started in 1956 and it really sort of hit its stride in the 60s. And there were a lot of local presenters that were just looking back, there were all these uh, performers who were all gay. Mm. Like if I look back on them all, they were all these hilarious, funny, brilliant poofs. And there was one really famously funny and brilliant, he's, he's considered our greatest ever television star, a guy called Graham Kennedy, who hosted a show called In Melbourne Tonight, and he hosted it continuously from 1957 to 1972. And um, he was a genius, a comic, an improvisational comic genius. And people are always asking me what my influences are, they say, well, it must be Barry Humphreys. Well, yeah, Barry Humphreys was a big influence, but as a child I never saw Barry Humphreys. I didn't see Barry Humphreys until I was in my teens. But Graham Kennedy was this genius, improvisational, very camp, um, and very sharp, rapier, witted, sort of um, uh, natural presenter and comic. Anyway, so, so I, was, we, I was soaked up all of that local variety, which was really like Bob. Yeah. It was really quite, Bob's actually quite an accurate portrayal of the kind of television that we had. And then there, all these old vaudevillians, all pe the people that had been vaudeville stars in Melbourne and Sydney and all the capital cities, they all just went straight into television because they were really needed for their improvisational skills because there was no time to script everything and everything went out live so they had to be uh, seasoned live performers yeah. so they wouldn't freak out yeah. and so there were all these fabulous old comic vaudevillians that came from what we had a thing called the Tivoli Circuit and they all did the Tonight Shows but they also did the afternoon shows, they also did the children's sessions and the children's sessions were just beyond camp and stupid and really funny and fabulous. And that they'd all make the crew laugh. They'd all be doing this double entendre type stuff. And, and all the crew would be laughing. They'd be doing all these filthy jokes in the children's session. I know um, Pee Wee Herman, who is like, I know, of my favorite, um, um, like, You know, I, I developed Bob. I invented Bob before I'd even heard or saw Pee Wee Herman. And when I saw Pee Wee Herman, and the first time I saw Pee Wee Herman was in about 1986, 1987, I was absolutely gobsmacked. That I had done something quite similar. Well, that's the thing that, that I mean. When I when I came today, I wanted to ask you questions because the only sort of character creation I can think of that did you know because you've been incredibly successful with Bob Down. I've never been out of work since I went solo in but, January 1987. Did you have like, Did you have any idea that you'd be no that no? I had no idea that the character would have anything like that longevity. No. But I, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's it's just it amazes me. And the thing that gave it the longevity was coming to the UK, and I, it just instantly clicked with British audiences because of the um, the music hall thing, but the song I, and dance man thing. You know the Brucey, yeah. Brucey, Des O'Connor. I think British kind of. audiences do, do really love that. And so. I also really love. They, I think British audiences really like character comedy more than Australian audiences too. I wanted to ask them about when you toured extensively with Lily Savage and well, we met what happened was we met at the 1991 festival yeah he came up and did um, he came up and did a run at the assembly rooms and um, he was um, his support act was a, an actor called Katrina and the boy and Katrina had seen me I don't know she must have just seen me at the festival I oh, no, she'd seen me before and she was raving to Sav, as uh, that's what we call him behind the scenes, yeah. um, <laughs> about this character, and Sav didn't want to come and see me. And I'd already seen Sav, I saw Sav for the first time at the White Swan yeah. in about 1990, and I've, I've, never, I've never seen anything so brilliant. And I remember watching him at the White Swan and just thinking, this guy's like an international star, and you know, I'm seeing him in a pub. Mm. And then, so Katrina dragged, so thank you Katrina, you were watching. Katrina dragged Sav. He didn't want to come and see me. She dragged him. Anyway, so, so we clicked instantly and we started um, working together that festival. We did a duet together at the, uh, which is, I wonder if that's up on, if I've got that. I don't think it's on. There's photos of it, but there's no, I don't think there's any film of it. Anyway, we did a duet at a big um, HIV benefit, HIV benefit at the Playhouse. And then we toured Australia together in 92. We did three months in Australia. And then I've done a few tours with him over the years. Yeah. 
wonderful. The do most fun you'll ever have working. Do you have a lot of stories that you could never actually sort of talk about in a public domain? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do have a that lot You're of laughing stories. now just thinking of I do have a lot of stories about me and Lily Savage that I, I wouldn't repeat in a public domain. <laughs> I wanted to talk with you about Gina. Ah, oh, Gina Riley. Yeah. Well, Gina Riley, of course, is uh, Kim from Kath and Kim. Gina and Jane, Gina and uh, Riley and Jane Turner, we all go back, we're all part of the same gang, we're the same age, we go, all go back the same gang of performers. There's always a, uh, you know, like a one, each generation of performers comes from the same little pool. Yeah. And we all come from, the, from Melbourne in the late 70s and early 80s, and we were all at a young people's theatre company called St Martin's Youth mm. Arts Centre. And that was like a pro-am young people's theatre company. And so I met Gina when I was, uh, she was 18, I think, and I was 21. And we invented a character um, for her called Coralie Hollow. Who was in Big Girl's Blouse. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Coralie Hollow was a girl I went to primary school with in Murrumbina. In really? <laughs> and she, she's quite happy about it. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so Gina, I, we invented Coralie for Gina before I invented Bob. We invented Coralie in 1980. And then I invented Bob in 1984. And then, of course, we... We've done a lot of work together as Bob and Carly. It's like, they're like, you know, a fag in his hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw those videos. Yeah, yeah. They've, been, they've been engaged for 25 years. That's <laughs> more like that. And then... So Gina, and so then when Gina and, and um, Jane created Kath and Kim, they created a little character for me called Daryl. Yeah. So I've been a recurring character. And they're shooting a movie. I was going to ask you about that because There's I really movie. wanted to get the exclusive. There's if... a Kath and Kim movie. It's been shot in Melbourne and in Europe in... in October and November, and it'll be uh, scheduled for release next Easter, and it's the final thing. It's a proper uh, comedy feature film, and I've got six days on it. So that means, oh, are you doing it? Then? So that means yeah, I've got the Daryl character. Oh, he's coming back. But it's got a bit of a twist, I think, the character. And but you know, if you've got five or six days, that means you've got quite. A, I've got quite a few scenes. But you don't know yet. No, I haven't seen the script yet. I haven't seen the script. But it's so exciting. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Because I've got them, I've had the most recurring appearances apart from um, the core cast and a beautiful woman called Mar Mark Downey, who was also in Big Girls Blouse, um, who uh, she does Marion, you know the yeah, you know the the guide, marriage guidance counsel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marg is a beautiful, beautiful woman. You see, the girls haven't done much over the last couple of years because they've been really, they're both raising teenage kids, and you know that's a that's been pretty full on for them. Yeah. So and they they also don't because it's their own sh show and their own com production company. They get together and they sit down and they don't they don't decide they don't do the give the go ahead to do another series unless they think they've really got eight strong episodes. Yeah. And the reason why they came up with this was that they they thought of an idea for a feature, and so they thought well let's do that. They didn't they couldn't face doing another eight episodes of a series, and they know that everybody's expecting one more thing. Yes, and to go out with a Pretty much a, oh, a bag. Yeah, it's going to be shot on Panavision. It's like Which, it's not on HD. It's going to be shot with a flip. Not with a flip. It's going to be the real thing. And none of this handheld either. No. I think it's going to be very kind of elegante. It's going to be um, really interesting. That is very exciting. So we all go back. And so Jane was in, Jane and Gina were both, my cabaret group that I started with my friend Wendy Duval, which you can also call the Globos, G L O B O S, which you can see on all the clips, I, a lot of clips I've put up on YouTube. But both Gina and Jane were in the Globos. So Jane was in the Globos when we when we went professional. We hit big in Sydney in 1982 at a cabaret in Sydney called Kinsella's. So we all go back um, 30 years. It's amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. That and we're all still in there swinging. But no, thank you. My so, pleasure. No, darling. thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. And if anybody's in Edinburgh and fancies a show, oh yes, this is the thing. We we'll plug as well. Look on Facebook, will you? For Christ's sake. Oh no, and we need to put the show. Oh yeah, Bob Down, 20 Golden Greats, uh, 8 o'clock every night at the Debating Hall at the Gilded Balloon. Just go gildedballoon.co.uk and uh, type in Bob Down and there I'll be and you'll be able to buy your tickets online. There's no excuse. It's too easy. <laughs> Just get your asses down to the Gilded Balloon.